Three Wrestling Podcast here, coming to you on a late Sunday night. I'm your host, Ernest Eden Christian, coming to you alongside Mike Vernier, Joe Lopez, folks, after two weeks uh, two weeks off. What's up? Not much. Just, um, I, I, I don't know if this counts as cheating, but I have SmackDown on since I never got to watch it. Oh, so, I, I finished I finished it today, y'all. Don't don't feel bad. I finished it today, so I'm I mean, I'm not gonna. Week. Yeah, I, I had to put something on right now while I'm sitting here. So mm-hmm. what's up? What's up? Is LeBron James host hoisting a championship? That's number four. That's what's up. I will say, uh, part of my part of my team to Heat. You know, t- I'm t- telling you, games. it hmm? was a well it was a well booked angle because. Kobe died this year, and then the Lakers won the championship. It's just like when Ray won the title after Eddie died. <laughs> I mean, tell I me know. I'm wrong. It was a well booked angle. Hey, I mean, it, it's kind of hard to lose when you have the two best parties, two best players in basketball on the same team. Can, can I same. just say, uh, as a 100 percent and uh, fuck anyone who disagrees, gay man. Stephanie McMahon has a hell of a lot of cleavage showing on the show. Yes. Yeah, but she was a like, cleavage show. Like, like Jesus Christ, put him away, girl. No, Jesus Christ, don't put it away, girl. How about that? Oh, <laughs> you know what? Anyway, when when they have Austin Theory out there in less clothes, then we could talk. Do you understand? <laughs> you understand every time I watch NXT and he comes out, I'm like. I wonder if Joe's watching this right now. <laughs> <laughs> Wednesday nights are a really good night for wrestling. You, you, de- you definitely, you know, I've definitely attached Austin Dury and Joe Lopez to the same same route, you know what I mean? So, anyway, thanks for your interesting show. We're going to um, talk about the, uh, first we're going to do our, our yearly um, fantasy draft, WWE style. This, this, unlike last year, we did we actually recorded last year and we never put it out to the masses. Um, but we got to do it this time on, on the audio version. Um, we do it on uh, fantasy draft. And then, What's up? There's a lot of, a lot of e- there was a lot of editing that uh made that that first video almost uh unwatchable. So you know that that we should we should, we should do an episode for Patreon and and explain the, the behind the scenes about that whole how the whole thing was a mess. Patron, <laughs> Patron, Patron, and then we'll celebrate three years of Jericho. But first, let's get into my topic first because my topic is going to be recapping um the first night of the, of the draft, which was on Friday night SmackDown. Um. Some interesting moves that happened this weekend uh, on, on Friday. Um, I, I guess rather than me give my opinion on this, I want to ask you guys what stood out to you, what moves you saw that was like, whoa, that's pretty interesting, and what not. Mike, you go first on that one. Uh, okay, so the first major move that I am very head-scratching on, uh, Seth Rollins and the entire uh, Mysterio gimmick going to SmackDown. Um, I, I'm trying to think if this is a... Fox decision on trying to get a Latin family in a major angle, you know, trying to play the demographic to try to get more t- uh, viewers. Um, also questioning the move of uh, to split up heavy machinery of Otis and Tucky. Um, I get it. Like, oh, we're going to move Otis. We're going to let Otis do his thing since he's the money in the bank. Um, and then, of course, let's address the big elephant in the room. Why? Why, why break up the new day? Yeah, that I mean, well, well, let's first off before we get to the new day real quick. It is possible Tucky could, could get drafted. So Otis would, is still a SmackDown, right? Yes, but Tucky was drafted to Raw on Smack. Okay, thank you. Smack. Okay, I, I didn't see that. That part I didn't see. Um, yeah, the new day thing was kind of, I, I kind of, not only did I not like what he did, I also don't like the way they did it. It was kind of like rushed. Well, how did they do it? Well, I mean, spoiler alert. Do you mind if you get a spoiler real quick? No, I mean, obviously. Okay, they win the tag titles. Okay, number one. They beat Cesaro and Shinsuke on SmackDown. Oh. And literally a minute later, when Biggie comes to celebrate with the guys, Stephanie does her final round of the draft. Wait, Xavier's back? Yes. Yeah, yeah, he comes back. Xavier oh, and Kofi are back. Way to, Xavier like, Kofi, bury uh, the lead, you bastards. Xavier and Kofi are going to Raw. Biggie staying on SmackDown. I mean, um, I heard that part, but I didn't realize that Xavier was back wrestling. That's awesome. Right. Here's the fucked up part, too, guys. First off, how was the New Day drafted so low anyway to begin with? This, this is like a dynastic team at this point now. So, Like okay. the final round, so, really? So I, like, you me, have Dana Brooke ahead of the New Day in the, in the draft order? Are you, are you kidding me? Let me, let, me, let me react to this one, okay? Go ahead. Go right ahead. Right. So, so, first of all, 
obviously the New Day over on Raw is going to stay a two-man team because every other black athlete is in the Hurt Business. So that's number one. <laughs> um, so we're, we're going to have to get used to a two-man New Day. It's a, it's a new short day. Uh, we've cut a few hours out of the day. It's okay. We're okay with this. Right. Um, I would be more worried if Big E hadn't been recently receiving the biggest push of his career. He obviously has the support of somebody backstage, maybe mm-hmm. a lot of somebodies, maybe the right somebodies. And, you know, they're obviously they're looking at it and they're being like, you know what, we can make this guy a star. And, you know, he doesn't need to be part of this three man act to even be a star. They're spreading the wealth a little bit. Now you have, you know, because honestly, I don't see his gimmick changing. I can see him still doing, yeah, I still see him doing the whole power of positivity thing. So basically, it's almost like they're not breaking up the new day as much as it's like, you know, as as he's kind of, you know, continuing the message on SmackDown while they're, you know, holding down the fort over on Raw. If I'm being honest, I think Big E is the most likely person to end up fighting for one of the world titles come uh, WrestleMania. We, and I, I have have that, we been saying that? For, we've been saying it for the last month and a half, though, haven't we, Mike? We've been yeah, saying no, that. I, mean, that. I, don't even, I don't even remember if I agreed back at the time, but I definitely no. agreed. No, now. you didn't agree with that. Yeah, I, no, I said no. it. Yeah, I, Mike yeah, said it, too. I, I agree now. I need some guacamole. I agree now that, like, that absolutely I can see it and – and that's why I don't hate it. I don't hate this at all. If it's a chance for him to shine, he shines a little bit brighter by himself. I think that, you know, I, I'm not loving his boots right now in this match. Um, yeah, I don't either. But, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not feeling, you know, usually the all white look, you know, like all white, nice, yeah. fresh, like clean. But like, no, we're not feeling this one. Uh, sorry, I, girl. I think shame, the feud with Sheamus is really a gateway. But like, that's what I'm gateway. saying. Yeah. yeah, no, it absolutely is. I, I mean, look, record. we all... For, we, we all low key forget that Seamus is quite literally a veteran at this point. Mm-hmm. Like he's been literally in the company for a good what, like fourteen years now, something like that. Like he's he he's a former world champion. He's the guy. He's a great guy to put the test against. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you, like Big E is, is passing. I I love that that move honestly. And by the way, you can still do what, what we've seen the last couple of weeks with Big E. The edge, the him being the jokey. You know, is he taking? Is he, taking, is he serious? Is not serious? This edge he's had the last episode on SmackDown, obviously he can do the both. He can balance the both. No, I mean, look, like wrestling tradition, like, I mean, Dusty Rhodes, yes, did he come out and cut very passionate promos? Sure. Did he also come out and just have a good time with some of his promos? Yeah. Mike, you're not a fan of the breakup? Well, the quote-unquote breakup? I mean, I think that, honestly, to get E over, he has to see if he can do it away from Kofi and X because Kofi's been a world champion. X has all of his stuff. So, I mean, that's why I think it's, it, it was a almost a necessary cause. Mm-hmm. Um, but to be sarcastic on Joe's comment about every African-American member of the roster being part of the Hurt Business on Raw, that is incorrect because you're getting Ricochet and Apollo Crews. <laughs> I think I think Joe thinks that it is there. <laughs> Ricochet, I, Apollo Crews. I mean, but, certainly Ricochet but, definitely was there. But what happens if maybe Ricochet I'm, I'm, wait, or Ricochet Apollo Cruz Latino? joins the new day? Say that again, now, Joe. Is it, is it Ricochet Latino? Hold on. <laughs> maybe Mike thinks. Uh, it's now, I think he might. I don't know. I don't know. He's Apollo, Apollo, actually, he's Ricochet. Maybe, maybe, maybe just because he's a. Dick, I just assumed that you know he would be part of the the her business. Have we asked? I him, mean, have we told that story about you and Ricochet? Yes. Yeah. On, on the air. Yeah. Yes, we told it. Okay. Hmm. That's, that's, that's a Patreon in the future. He's still a dick. <laughs> uh, my my biggest takeaway is something that I wish they would have done, and I think it would have been better for the long term storytelling, especially because of what happens on SmackDown. The fact that Sasha Banks is still a member of the SmackDown roster, and I expect Bailey to be still on the roster as well. I would have thought this was the perfect opportunity to get the two of them on different shows leading into them wrestling at WrestleMania post mm-hmm. the, the breakup angle. Um, so, yeah, I, I just would have thought that that would have been a way for them to get Sasha on the Raw for, for four or five months until... Yeah, whoever goes to Raw, her. yeah, you, you just want to the show whoever wins the Rumble, challenges Sasha, uh, challenges that's, Bailey. That's, that's what I figured. 
Right, that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm with you on that one, definitely. Mega Power sure. style, of course. Yeah, it kind of seems like a waste at this point. I mean, I suppose... No, there's no real unless, way to do it at this point, because you can't have, unless, like, Flash... Of... Unless you move Bailey. Yeah, but I was about to say, but if you move Bailey, you have to have Sasha, like, beat her for the title, essentially, before At that, and then that kills her. Like, like the, the, the chase, the fun of it is not watching Bailey win the Rumble and, like, go to face Sasha. The fun of it would be watching Sasha do it. What is the problem, too? I, this is why I hate what they're doing with the angle. I love the angle. But it feels rushed. Like, first of all, Sasha had an injury, a, 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 which we believe to be a serious injury. She should, should be off, off TV for at least a month, month and a half, at least. She was playing court. I concur. The, the fact that they're, do, they're now doing a match of Hell in a Cell now in two weeks, like, like, geez, I mean, I get it. But come on, let this shit simmer a little bit. That's what I thought the perfect chance would have been to get them yeah. on separate shows would have been perfect. And it's possible it, it may still happen. Okay, can we talk about the most obvious move in the history of the draft that everyone knew was coming before the draft even started? Which was? The Miz going over to Raw because he always goes to the other brand in every single draft. Correct. But do you guys like it? Him and Morrison over on Raw? Well, the Raw, Raw, needs, more, Raw needs more characters, I will say that. And definitely characters. Well, I, I said this in the group chat, and this is how I genuinely feel. Um, I feel that WWE should merge the tag titles together. And I feel like it's time because they don't have a basically a solid group of tag teams on all all the shows, mm-hmm. but they have enough tag teams to make it work if there's one set of champions. Yeah. Um so that's why I, said I mean I they, feel like they, they have they have a precedent for it since the women's tag titles are like that right now, so it wouldn't even be a hard. You find the titles, it, it would. That's yeah. Good. yeah, I was actually talking. My, my my buddy James Nice came on. Big Jim came on the show on, th- on my podcast on Thursday. He said the same exact thing. You unify some of those titles, make it easier because the rosters are thin too. On top of that, I mean, the only titles that I would unify really are the tag titles because mm-hmm. you still have enough middle card talent to fight but, for the U.S. and Intercontinental title on here's, the two shows. Here's the question. May I may I interject with a query? Go ahead. Correct. <laughs> Queer. Um, I, said, I can make those jokes. I can make those jokes. Anyway. You did. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, what would you think about incorporating the NXT tag belts into that, merging them all into one, and then, like I said, like just how the, with the women's tag champions can go into all three brands, just having one set of tag champions? Because let's be honest. The NXT tag scene right now is the saddest of all three. Wait, you mean it, wait, wait, you mean there is a ta- an NXT ta- ta- tag scene at this point? I mean, I mean, like there's like one and a half teams. It, like it, it depends on if um depends on if like Marcel Bartel or where the fuck his name is is like yeah. sick that week. Yeah. There's there's like four tag teams, but yeah, it, it's it's not good. No, it's terrible. You have Brizongo, you have Imperium. What would you think of them just, like, merging that in also? Would you be against that, for that? Personally? Yeah. If you merge those together, like, you still have to find a tag team on NXT to fight for the titles that you're actually going to believe is going to beat a main roster Raw or SmackDown tag team. Like, if you tell me right now that the New Day is coming to NXT to fight someone for the tag titles, they're going to blow Breeze on go out of the water. The only team that I want to see them face is, is the Undisputed Era. That's fair. Yeah. But it might be a good way uh, to finally get some new <laughs> matches, like Undisputed Era versus New Day. And no, no, like absolutely. That. Like, that like that would be my selling point, would be the team that is the tag champion. So if it's the Street Profits, they come back and defend the titles there. Or if it's uh, the New Day, you know, you get new matchups against Undisputed Era or Imperium or even Breeze on go. Even though I think the match, like, it would be more of an entertainment match than a spectacular wrestling contest. Um, but I think that, I think that's where I would, I, I think, like, logically, like, yes, I would say that they should should merge all the titles together. Um, but if that's the case, are you merging the NXT UK titles too, or, or no? Because you're not going to send anyone overseas yeah. right now, correct? No, I mean, no, do no. They, do they have champions right now, even? Yes, it's Gallus. It's Mark Coffey and Wolfgang. They beat Flash Morgan Webster and Mark Andrews as part of like a ladder match at the last takeover before shutdown. Oh yeah, yeah, that match was sick. I remember that. 
Yeah, what about a, a really good match. Mm-hmm. What about AJ Styles at Raw? Get him the fuck away from Paul Heyman because he exactly. hates his guts. Yeah, I know. That yeah. was that was the most obvious. I think that was the most obvious pick after mm-hmm. the Miz. Mm-hmm. But can I be honest? I've never enjoyed him on Raw. Every time he moves over to Raw, he's just not the same quality. He feels, like, he, I, I will say, based on last year, whenever when I came to watching last year, yeah. he felt a little lost in the shuffle in Raw. To me, yeah. No, to like me. It, it's. I think it's the booking or something on Raw. Maybe it'll be different now since they have someone you know running both shows, so it right. won't. It's not quite as different, but I swear to God, like in the past, every time he's been on Raw, it's been kind of a kind of a, a, a down note versus when he's on SmackDown and basically one of the biggest stars every single time. Right. Like, I think right. this is also mm-hmm. this is also right. his first Raw run that he hasn't had Gallows and Anderson there to kind right. of force yeah. a Bullet Club, the Club, whatever the hell you want to call them, reunion. Club. Um. So. Yeah, when I, when I remember watching, saw watching last year, he was putting over Ricochet at the time, which didn't hold, obviously. He's been lost ever since. What, one move that st- stuck out to me also, too, was Bianca Belair going to SmackDown. They need to deepen up the, the SmackDown women's roster a little bit. I mean, literally, it's it's Sasha, it's Bailey, and then it's like Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. Um, so here's, so th- here's an interesting question. In the past... Something like that, a move like that, like Bianca going over to SmackDown, almost guarantee that you're going to end up seeing the Street Profits over on SmackDown. Because, you know, they wouldn't break up like a couple like that that are married, yada, yada, yada. But right now, considering it's all just in the same city and everything, mm-hmm. yep. you don't have to do that. So That's do you guys think that the Street Profits are going to SmackDown or do you think they're staying on Raw? They're staying on Raw. I think they're staying on Raw. Because they weren't part of this pool on Friday night, right? So, no. So you're going to have both sets of tag titles on Raw. Well, I mean, if you're going to unify them anyway. Well, no, I'm just saying, but that's what I'm saying. It, it seems like if that if the Street Profits stay on Raw, you're either going to have to unify them or the New Day is going to have to lose like a rematch to Cesaro and Sheamus or something. They were saying that if, if the – so let's say Bailey gets chosen by Raw, for example, the, the belt goes with her too. How does that work, though, with That's the belt what, on another show? Maybe they can come back and fight whomever is the number one contenders on that show whenever a title match comes up. And does the wild card rule apply to the, to the champions, obviously, I, I assume, I guess? No, it'll, it'll probably be at, like, Hell in a Cell. They'll probably take care of that. That's what they've done in the past, usually. Well, I will say it'd be easier to navigate this that is, kind of stuff now. This is because not of the, the first time where, like, a champion or challengers ended up on the opposite show during a draft, and they usually... And they just finish the angle at Hell in the Cell and move on. Exactly. Right. Which is why, like, honestly, if Bailey does end up going over to Smack, uh, to Raw, expect to see Sasha win the title at Hell, uh, Hell in a Cell. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, I have no question uh, in uh, my uh, mind about that. So Seth obviously, so obviously, yeah, Seth Rollins won the SmackDown. Roman Reigns stays put. Drew McIntyre stays put. Oscar stays put. Um, this this hurt business stays put. Stays put. Stays put. What, what you guys thoughts on the hurt business? You guys, you guys like it? I love it. I love the angle. Yeah, I absolutely love it. They feel like tweeners, actually. I don't agree I, with I, that, but I see, love I it. Feel, I, see what I feel like the hurt business is is. Four guys that are doing whatever the fuck they want. They don't yeah. need to be faces. They don't need to be heels. Because the thing is, like, they'll, they'll they'll try to save face by fending off retribution, but it doesn't mean that they're going to be best friends with Ricochet. They'll still punch him in the face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Look, it's like it, it's basically a reboot of one of seven angles that actually worked in TNA in the last ten years. So who's going to hate it? And it's, it's it's definitely getting Bobby Lashley over too, especially. In a way that you know, and he's not lost. You know, like the monster he is. So. Can they can they bring can they bring in the aces and eights? Where are they? What is that? It was the one ace. of the eight. It was one of the other eight angles that Joe mentioned that TNA didn't screw up. Was that one of Was that one of the teams we were trying to figure out? That I was asking. Oh, no, 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 no. That was one of the teams that's actually going to make a run in that. By the way. Because okay. you know, when when you're with the Aces and H, you don't walk alone. <laughs> um, I'm trying to figure out what what are the standouts from uh, the draft this week. Well, I mean, let's just go. 
McIntyre stays, Roman stays, Oscar stays, Seth to SmackDown, her business stays, AJ to Raw, Sasha goes is staying on SmackDown, Naomi moves to, to Raw, to Raw, Jay Uso stays on SmackDown. She married to Jimmy or Jay? I don't even fucking remember anymore. She's married to Jimmy, who is injured. Still injured, yes. Threw in the white towel last week. Uh, uh, so Bianca goes to SmackDown. Nia and Shayna stay on Raw. Ricochet stays on Raw. Jay, like I said, goes to SmackDown. Mandy Rose stays on Raw. Dana Brooks stays on Raw. The whole Mysterio clan goes to SmackDown. Miz and Morrison, the New Day to Raw. E stays on SmackDown. Otis stays on SmackDown. Angel Garza stays on Raw. On Talking Smack, Humberto Carrillo stays on Raw. Murphy goes to SmackDown. Drew Gulak goes to Raw. Kalisto stays on SmackDown. Mm-hmm. And Tucker. Tucker's movie to Raw. So okay. notables, can we notables? Can we appreciate? Can we appreciate the fact that only in pro wrestling can there be a draft where an entire family gets like drafted at once? Like it, it's not like on it's not like at the NBA draft like they're calling someone and being like, "Hey, congratulations, you made it to the Trailblazers." To the ball, bring the ball mom family, and dad too. Like the ball family. Yeah, bring the whole family. <laughs> um. All right. So notable quote free agents. Uh, the Lucha House Party of Graham, Metalik, and Lindsay Dorado, they have not been signed anywhere. Nikki well, James has not has, been signed. Right? Kalisto has. He has gone to SmackDown. And they're really? not He's doing the, good Lucha he, things. He, and they're not on the, the next uh, second uh, bracket? No. Okay. Nope. So Lucha House Party, Mickey James, and Shorty G are left out. Uh, other notable retaliation, part of the stable retribution, which was the character that was Mercedes Martinez. It looks like she is out of the group and back in NXT as Mercedes Martinez oh, based God. off of Ali posting some poster. Uh, and then other people who are not eligible for the draft, uh, Becky Lynch, obviously. Big Show, who is really on a Legends deal. Um, Bo Dallas hasn't been seen in almost a year. Uh, the Forgotten Sons, after the whole... Uh, Jackson Riker tweet about the Black Lives Matter moment movement. Uh, oh God! Wait, Eric, what? That, that's why they got they got pulled almost six months ago because of it. I I didn't even notice they were gone. That's how. Wow, I feel bad. Well, wait, what happened? Hold on. Do we want to talk about it? Do I even want to know? I'm gonna see if I can find the tweet real quick. I actually don't know the full tweet. I just know that there was a tweet that was posted. Uh, that forced basically them. Oh well, okay, yeah, this one, this one's gonna be bad. Yo, not not for nothing, but this Sheamus and Big E match on SmackDown from this past Friday is really good. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Like like really good. I really enjoyed Today? it. Okay. So I feel like this is a really bad segue into a racist tweet, but let's do it. Let's do this it. could be real. This this one could be real bad. Hold on, right, I, right. I gotta I gotta read the full thing. Can so you come I, back to it? I, I, okay, we'll come, we'll come back to it after this segment. No, no, no. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it now, just because okay. it, it's not good. Uh, okay, so Riker's original tweet was thankful for the at the president of the United States. We have God bless America, built on freedom, forgotten no more. June 10th, pretty touchy subject, but all this Black Lives Matter garbage baffles me. I challenge anyone of color or race to go watch watch 12 Years a Slave, the movie, and realize how good you all actually have it. Learn heritage, Christ, Gandhi, Buddha, they all taught love and care for others. This is getting out of hand. I pray for the nation daily. Can, can we just get him over onto a Raw Underground segment and just let the Hurt Business like shoot on his ass? And I don't so, mean that in the I don't mean that in the Brooke Straight Boys way either. I mean kick the shit out of him. So that was July. That was July 10th that he posted the. That's awful. Jesus so, fucking Christ. So on June 1st he posted the tweet about God bless America built on freedom, freedom no more or whatever forgotten no more. Ali responded, I'm thankful you posted this because now I'm aware of what you stand for. When black brothers and sisters are crying, you praise someone that refuses to acknowledge their hurt. Dave Batista goes along the lines of saying, I'm just 
keeping him nameless because he's a sorry ass motherfucker who I refuse to let Ooh. ride my coattails. He gets no love from me. He gets no rub from me. And if you'd like to discuss it in person, we have enough mutual acquaintance that this will be able to find me very easily. Um, Wesley Blake liked the following tweet from his tag team partner, Steve Cutler, that says, quote, it shouldn't matter your race or however you identify. We are all human beings and all deserve equal. Hashtag justice for George Floyd. What a summer, huh? Uh, and then I'm just I'm trying. There, there's one that I saw here that that I was that. There's one that is literally I saw like a caption of it, and I'm trying to see if it's a real tweet or if it's if it's not. Because the one here. Hmm. Realize how good. You are. I, I I'm I really just want to see because if that's the tweet, then Jackson Riker should really just either get shoot it on like Joe said, or he really should just fucking just go away. Whew. That's a good lot of go away heat there, bro. <laughs> well, su- Jesus. Supposedly, supposedly the tweet that I'm trying to figure out literally says WWE Jackson Riker says Black Lives Matter is garbage. Quote, realize how good you all actually have it. Well, that was the 12 Years a Slave one that you just read. I'm just saying, I, I was trying to see if it was if it was insinuating no, think, that one or if, no, it, if think, it was just that. Yeah, because he, he, it was he just said that. it in there. Yeah, he said it in there. He was like, go watch 12 Years a Slave and see how like good you have it. Which, by the way, like, honestly, really go fuck yourself. Like... Like, damn, go fuck yourself, or if, you know, if you can't reach that far, I'll do it for you. Because, like, Jesus Christ. On June 1st, Trump reportedly ordered authorities to get tear gas. Can we, can we honestly, can, can we move on past this? Because this guy doesn't deserve any more attention. <laughs> okay. I'm, I, I'm literally, I'm literally looking at this last article to see. He, he just doesn't, like, like, he literally never deserves to have another word spoken about him. Any other, uh, standouts from, uh. I think that's it, right? So, so does that mean that I should remove them from the pool for night number yeah, two? Yeah, I would. That's up to you. You, you got to make a decision on that one. See you, bye. Damn, it's like that. Okay. Trust, no, one. trust me. Trust me. If I, knew, if, if I knew it was that bad, I wouldn't have even put them. Oh, no, no. Yeah, I mean, you, know, you didn't know. No, I, so. legit, I legitimately was like, oh, man, I forgot that they were even a thing. So I was just looking at the at the roster today. And yeah, I was like. No big deal. I and just, I'm like, like, can I just honestly, you know, and, and just to take a moment and then we can move on past it, because between this and the Lars Sullivan story that I was reading earlier, like, but why is it so hard to not be a shitty person sometimes? Because I don't understand it. It is, it is what it is, man. Jesus Christ. <laughs> like our president says, it is what it is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's not my president. I know, I know. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, we'll see. You know, you know, you know, you, you know who my president is? The Gorilla Monsoon? That, that, Jack guy Tony. that guy, too. That guy, too. Jack Tony. Jack Tony. Jack Tony. Jack Tony 2020. Jack, I'm with it. That's Let's right, go. Bro. Let's go. No Adam Pierce? No? He's, He's not, not a president, president, though. I know. He might as well still be a fucking president, though. The way, the way he I love, I love, I love Scrap Daddy, though. <laughs> I know you don't know him as Scrap Daddy, but I love me some Scrap Daddy. Yeah, let's go. Oh, let's go. Get, and, get, give me and, 10 pounds of gold, Adam Pierce. Well, this is a wonderful segue now into the next topic. Uh, we're going to do our first fancy draft with Mike. Let's go. Yeah, as you guys have found out, because I just deleted the Forgotten Sons uh, from our draft pool, uh, we're going to take the WWE draft that's going on, and we're going to give it the old take three twist. Uh, it is myself, Joe, and Ernest, obviously. One of us is going to represent each brand. It's going to be NXT included, talent-wise. <laughs> Excuse me. And as Pick a up. brand, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I'm going to go to random.org. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit random. The winner is going to pick okay. what brand they want to represent with Raw getting the extra pick due to it being a three-hour show. <laughs> Here comes everybody. Yeah, I don't know why either. All right, randomizer. New randomizer. All right, so 
I'm going to randomize it two times, and we're going to go from there. And it is going to be... I have the first pick to represent a show. Ernest has the second pick, and Joe is left with whatever show is left. Well, fuck you guys. I love you too, buddy. Uh, I'll, I'll just go ahead and do it. I'm going to take Monday Night Raw. I'm going to see if I can build that show up to something better than what it is. I'll take NXT. I don't give a crap. Unless you want that, though, Joe. I really don't care. Okay, I'll, I'll say NXT then. I'll say NXT. Joe, Next. Joe gets the blue brand. He gets to wear his Team Teddy shirt. <laughs> he has one of them. What do you want from him? <laughs> WrestleMania, I, WrestleMania I, delight, I'm, dog. I'm actually wearing my blue Finn Balor t-shirt. That counts. Yeah, I'm wearing red. Ernest used to put on a black shirt, and we're actually representing it right Ernest now. Ernest always has a black shirt on. You just yeah, I, got, I, got, I got a black Sandlot shirt, you know? I got a Sandlot right. shirt, a black. Yeah. My favorite, okay. er, Ernest is my favorite Power Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. All right, so we're going to randomize the draft order, uh, and Raw will take their last pick uh, after that. So we'll go one, two. So we're going to go. Uh, I, I'm I'm randomizing it, sir. Hold on a second. Oh, oh, oh you are. You are, you are. All right, so it's going to be Joe with the number one overall pick. I'm second. EJ is last. So it'll go Joe, me, Ernest, Joe, me, Ernest, and then I will make the final pick of each round. Okay. How many rounds are doing here? Uh, well, let's try to get through at least seven or eight if we can, and then we'll, if we can sneak an eighth round in, awesome. If not, there will be a free agent period where we will put our – everyone gets a – the names of some the hat kind of thing, and then we'll put up the final rosters on social media and let the fans determine who has the better roster. Okay. So with that being said, uh, representing the blue brand, it is Joe Lopez. Uh, I'm going to take the face that runs the place, AJ Styles. Ooh. They do not want any. They do not want any. I He All just right, so. doesn't belong on Raw, so... All right, so Joe takes AJ Styles with the number one overall pick. My first round selection, I'm going to take the collective unit known as the Undisputed Era. Damn it! Oh. The kill me, guys God. later. Damn it. Got, got him. God. How did you think that they were going to make it past two? I don't know, man. Fuck. They, <laughs> they, they, do, not, they do not want any. Okay. So they're, they're gone. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, you know what? Uh, uh, no, no. Fuck it. I'll take it. Her business. All right. Her business off the board. First round is Styles, Era, and the Hurt Business. Joseph Lopez up for his second pick of round number one. Oh, there's like a, there's like a talent pool I have to pay attention to, isn't there? Yeah. Damn, I gotta go check that. Hold on one second. I, oh my I god! Didn't see that AJ Styles was on it. Wow. Yeah, he, he was. Guess he what? See, see, guess what? Maybe, maybe we get it right. Why are you looking up? That was impressive. Um, yeah. all right, let's friend. see. Let's see. My number two pick. Oh, okay. I'll make this easy. I know I who you're like going. He's someone. I feel like he's someone who like every roster could use. Quite honestly, um, and that's Randy Orton. Oh, that's not who I thought you were going. Oh, I'm surprised. I mean, Randy he's a veteran, but he's still got, like, I don't know. Like, look, he fought most of this year as one of the main event guys for a reason. Biggest heel of the year in Raw. So, to damn sure. Let's just go ahead and fill Randy Orton in. Uh, my next pick is going to be one, I don't know it, of its moderate surprise or not. Uh, I will take a guy who's been on maternity leave for the last couple months. I'm going to take the American Dragon. Daniel Bryan. Okay. This will be easy for me. Er- Ernest's final pick of the yeah. second. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take uh the, the newly uh the uh Paul Heyman's own Roman Reigns. Alright, so second round complete, Orton, Daniel Bryan, Roman Reigns. Now I will make the final pick of round number one being the three hour show. Mm-hmm. I get the extra pick. Uh, I will make this one very easy. I will take the current NXT champion. I will take Finn Balor. 
Ooh. So. Okay. That's round one. First round, first round in the books. It is Undisputed Era, Daniel Bryan and Finn Balor for Raw. It is AJ Styles and Randy Orton for SmackDown. It is the Hurt Business and Roman Reigns now wearing black and yellow. Uh, Joe with the first pick of the second round. <clears throat> Uh, huh. Hmm. Hmm. Um, hmm. Hmm. Ah, is Seth Rollins still available? He is. Yes, he is. Yeah, all right. Well, he can come over Friday night. All right. Friday night Messiah. Over to SmackDown. I'm actually, I'm actually planning to make everyone's nickname the Friday night whatever the hell they are. <laughs> so like, like AJ Styles is about to be the, the Friday night phenomenal AJ Styles. And uh, uh yeah. I'm gonna take a guy who I thought should have been pushed more than he has been uh on Raw in real life, and I'm going to take the former NXT champion, Keith Lee. Ooh, I like ooh, wow. Alright. I'm a, not a mem- not a member of the Hurt business. I'm gonna choose the new day. I want you to play. I was bit. wrong, yo. But promise the WWE for having such a diverse roster. Yeah, absolutely. Because I mean, um, like honestly, like if you look at AEW's roster, it's basically like an episode of Friends. But like right, WWE, right, right, right. like it's like an episode <laughs> of Fresh Prince. I'm giving I, them credit. That's funny, dude. That is funny. I want to change up here a little bit. I'm gonna take uh, Sasha Banks. <laughs> <laughs> it's boss time. Yep, it's boss time. Uh, Joseph. Um. Oh, I got one. Okay, so we are welcoming over the Friday Night Swiss Superman Cesaro. Ooh, I like it. Underrated. I like that. Uh, this one. This one I'm gonna make just out of the. The, the joy that I get out of watching this person wrestle. Uh, it was boss time for NXT. It is Tony time for Monday Night Raw. I will Ooh. take Tony Storm. Oh, and she's back too. <laughs> All right, let me go. Let me look it up here. This roster, look it up. For, um, for the record, I demand that when you put this up on social media, you have all my nicknames with it. You'll have to send it to me. You'll have to send it to me in a PDF. <laughs> Well, all the tippy top guys are gone already. If you send me my list after this is over, I will send you back with all the nicknames. I am going to rebuild this guy who's been lost on the Raw roster. I'm going to take Alpha Black. Oh, that's a good one. Mm hmm. Bring him back home. Right. Final pick of the second round belongs to yours truly. I will take the current reigning and defending SmackDown Women's Champion. I will take Bailey. Yeah, I like that one. I was hoping she slipped to me, but that's all right. No, yeah, you were. Round, yeah, I know you were. Yeah, Round number know. three, Joseph, Joseph Lopez, you have the floor. All right. So I'm ready with this one. It's going to be a shocker to you guys. You're not oh, expecting boy. this, okay? Because Carmella. Carmella. Joe's, Joe's, throwing, Joe's throwing one out there. I'm going to tell you, I'm a fan of this guy. I'm mostly picking him because I thought of his nickname. But... I am also a fan of this guy, and I always have been every time he at least showed up. And he is now the Friday Night oh, Feline, Lince fucker. Dorado. I knew you were going right there. <laughs> That's the worst part. <laughs> when he said when he shows up, I was like, you mother. <laughs> I've been watching him in Chikara since 2008, and man, the future is now. <laughs> All right. Is it, is it your turn now, Mike? It is. I'm too busy laughing at the fucking Futurist Now reference that we just got on the show. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, wait. I can take Ricochet and Axe to make free. Yeah, Ricochet. Ricochet. You can, because I'm, I'm not going to go You're not doing it. <laughs> he was no. in the fucking team. I know Does anyone know what Jimmy one? Olsen's doing? Jamming. <laughs> uh, my right? next pick is... <laughs> is... <laughs> My next pick is the current WWE Women's Tag Team Champions, the team of Nia Jax and oh, Shayna Baszler. Oh, you bastard. 
Hey, I'm gonna oh, have guys, by the way, Happy National coming out day. Hey, Wait, you, you, you got both, right? You got both of them? Shayna and, yes. and Naya? Correct. Okay, because he had a separate... Yeah, 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 you actually had Shayna in the men's section and then Shayna and Naya in the women's section. Oh, did I really? Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was going to take her, too. That's the only thing. I was going to take her next, but damn you. Yeah, Uh-oh. get wrecked. You get wrecked. That's right. All right, my turn. My turn. All right. Uh, I'm looking through, perusing through this uh, roster. Um, you know what? Let's go Us Jey Uso. Oh. Tell him Us. Tell him Us. Tell him <laughs> All right. So Jey Uso off the board to NXT. Joe Lopez, second pick of the third round. Uh, fuck it. I'm taking Ricochet. I'm reuniting Ricochet. the pictures now. He's the Friday really? night aerial assassin, Ricochet. I thought that was what's his name's nickname? Who? Will Ospreys. Well, okay, but he's not here, so we're taking it. All right, fine. Uh, my next he's pick. He's looking I'm good in take... the G1, by the way. Yes, he is. He's looking real good. Not like that. I know that's how you're talking right now. But yeah. No, no, no. I, I, I meant like com- <laughs> competitively. Okay. Uh, I mean, my I like pick, him other than, like, you know. My pick is one of the longest reigning champions in WWE history. I am taking the bruise weight. Oh. Pete. Oh, done. I, I, I He's fucking him done. I, I balled him through. Yeah. Damn it. Uh, Pete done. done. Pete done. All right. I'm going to go. Okay. So I'm looking through here. Let me get. I'm going to rebuild this this girl. I love her so much. Naomi. I'm going to rebuild her. (laughs) Where's Pete done that so I can mark him off my uh, my list? He's in between Jey Uso and Cesaro. Oh, let's go. Let's go, Uso. Do I do this? Do I do this? Do I do this? Do it. Final pick for Monday Night Raw of the third round. Will be. Do it. Do it, Michael. All right, Mr. Money in the Bank. I'll take Otis. I knew it. Shit. I knew it. Shit. Ew. Tuck it. Right, just because he's Mr. Just just because he's Mr. Money in the Bank right now doesn't mean that he would actually get to cash in the contract. I mean, I would probably take the contract off of him. Mm-hmm. Okay, Joe. First pick in the fourth round. All right, I'm starting the fourth round with another shocker, you guys. Okay. We're welcoming over the Friday Night Gorilla, Mansoor. Do you know that he's not really a gorilla? He, that is his <laughs> nickname. He is, gor- he is the Friday Night Gorilla, Mansoor. Have you actually seen Mansoor before? Or we just we'll put him in a gorilla costume. Don't don't All argue right. with me. Just ask you a question. Isn't he big? No, he's the little no. skinny fucker. Whatever. He's a skinny fucker. Well, We'll we'll bulk him up. We'll like he'll go hang out with um, one of the people Otis? with the muscles. Yeah, there you go. We'll 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 have Otis feed him. Uh, okay. First pick of the fourth round for myself is a guy who I think is killing it in NXT right now, and thankfully defeated he who shall not be named on this show at Takeover. I'm gonna take oh, that Kushida. Fucker. Oh man. I have a question. Yes. Is it possible to take two guys as a tag team? That's have separate. you not paid a, wait, like guys that are already a tag team, you mean? Well, they were, and then they stopped because of COVID, and now they're, I, I guess they're back to it, I guess. Who? You're going to try to take, you're going to take, try to take Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler? Correct. I'll allow it. Okay. That's what I want. I knew, I knew the minute that he was like, it stopped because of COVID. I was like, that's definitely Rude and Ziggler. Yeah. So they've been, they've been attacking for quite a while though, actually. Until, they were yeah. attacking for almost six months to a year before COVID shut everything right. down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, he held tight titles for a little while. Yep. Uh, Joseph, the final pick of yours of this fourth round. Well, I guess I might as well start getting some women. So, uh, welcome over the. I don't know. I'll give her some nickname later, but Ember Moon. He's back too. The Friday Night Eclipse. Good too. What was that? Friday Night Eclipse. The Friday Night Eclipse. Mm -hmm. There you go. 
Uh, I'm going to take the brainwashed Alexa Bliss. Uh, yeah. <laughs> let him in. All right. Let me uh, look through this list one more time. Um, you know what? I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the host of Halloween Havoc, Shanti Blackheart. Uh, final pick of the fourth round, oh, Monday night. Wait, 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 wait! Just so you know, you just reminded me. Y'all better start watching old Halloween Havoc. We're talking about that shit soon. Okay. Like how soon? Like next week soon or the week after next soon? I don't know. It depends on if I start watching any of myself this week. Hey, if we're talking about Halloween Havoc, we got to talk about War and Hogan, part two. No, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and the real bomb. Never mind. <laughs> we talked about these guys a little bit on the discussion of the tag teams being merged together. I'm going to take them now. The current NXT tag team champions, Tyler Breeze and Fandango. All right. And that's round four, right? Yes, that is round number four of the draft. Joseph Lopez is on the clock for his first pick of the fifth round. Okay, so this is an easy one. I'm taking them as a tag team. They're not going to stay a tag team, because fuck that. But welcome over the um, Friday Night Delight, and we'll think of something for the Miz. Okie dokie. Well, the Miz not on the list, is he? No. No, but they're a tag team, so I'll just kill them off of night. So two. Morrison, okay, so Morrison and Miz, okay, cool. All right. Yeah, I'm surprised. That, yeah, because they're a team. I, so. I did this. I did this really quick. Random. Right. Just, oh, just to get it, just to get it, and then I randomized it. So I was just like, uh, oops. All right. All right. Uh, my first pick of this round. Hold on, let me clear out John Morrison. So. I don't try to draft the Friday Night Delight and the Miss. Friday Night Short Term A Lister. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna do this, and I really don't know why. Uh, Monday Night Raw would like to welcome aboard the current reigning and defending NXT Cruiserweight Champion Santos Escobar. Oh, okay. All right, um, NXT here. Um, I am going to take. <laughs> er, boy, look at this list. You know what? Let me get one, one, one more lady here. Let me get Lacey Evans. Look at this. Lamp, 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 what? That sounds uh, like a fucking her. theme song to the Beverly Hillbillies. What are you doing? I hate her theme song. Who, Lacey yeah. Evans? It's awful. Mm. Joseph? All right, I'm ready with this one. Hold on. I just had someone in mind, and then I forgot. And now I'm looking over my list again. Oh, there he is. Okay, so you have to understand, I'm going to take him, but I'm going to give him a whole new gimmick. It's going to be amazing, okay? He's going to oh, be – he's going to be – think Nails. You remember Nails? So it's going to be kind of oh, like God. Nails. Oh, God, here we go. Welcome to Friday Night Felon, Murphy. God. Oh my God, Joe, what's wrong with you? Man? I actually like I, I actually like the pick of Murphy because it was either him or Escobar for me there, and I decided to go with Santos Escobar instead. All right, Let me go ahead and highlight Lacey Evans. So we Yo, drop some first. You know what's Yo. surprisingly really good? Salted vinegar potato chips and like guacamole. I can see that actually. I fully uh, the, recommend it. The second, second round. The second pick of round number five or six. Round number five. Five for Raw will be the leader of Team Kick, Dakota Kai. All right, I like that one. I'm trying to All bolster right. up my women's division. Mm-hmm. All right, from my, from my pick now uh, of NXT, I'm going to take. Probably still on the board. To be honest with you. Angel Garza. Probably because he's hurt. We're we're pretending he's not hurt, though. Well, obviously, but I'm just saying, that's probably why I didn't draft him. I'm like, oh, that guy's hurt still. Mm. 
Uh, did I? Did I? Did I? Uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> okay. Uh, final pick of this round, the Raw brand will select. Yeah, screw it. Let's do it. Cameron Grimes. Oh, it's a good one. He's slowly growing on me, actually. I have to admit. After the last takeover, not 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 this takeover before that, slowly growing on to me, actually. All right. Round number six. All right. We'll do eight rounds, right? Uh, I mean, we can do eight. We probably have enough talent to do eight. If not, okay. we can stop after seven, and whoever's – if there's an odd number left that doesn't fill it, what we'll is still make them the, quote, free so, agent. Yeah, let's stop at seven, and then let's do Yeah, because seven will be 14 selections. Right? All right. Okay. Yeah. Joseph, right. the pick is yours. Three, four, five, six, so eight. what women aren't – is Naomi taken? Yes. Yep. It's me. God damn it. Who took her? I did, damn it. Round three. You, well, you suck. You All don't right. value her. You don't um, value her like I do. She was about to be the Friday Night Glow, and you you put her out. So whatever. Yeah, round, and round six, um, right? Come on. I mean, I, I mean, Netflix Netflix already canceled Glow, so I mean. Uh, yeah, that's how sad is that. That show was great. COVID. Um, okay. Okay. What woman is available? Okay. Nikki James, James, Peyton Royce, Nikki. Liv Morgan, Carmella, Tamina, Aaliyah, Billy Kay, Casey Cantanzaro, Caden Carter, Vanessa Bourne, Jesse Kamea, and Santana Garrett. So basically, no good ones. Okay, got it. I'm going to wait to draft women on the next one. Um, <laughs> let's see. He can say that. Fuck he, it. He, he can say that, though. <laughs> Fuck it. Um, I don't want the kid, because for real, but I'm taking Rey Mysterio. All right, so Rey Mysterio. So no, what, no, no Dominic? He's not I, drafting Dominic. Okay. Fucking, unless you want to see him with a donkey gimmick, no. Donkey! I will make him Dominic the Donkey. You hate Dominic the Story, God. Okay, so since Joe decided that he didn't want to draft a woman, I will. I will take Peyton Royce. Okay. I'm trying to All have right. the best women's division in the world, dude. What do you want from me? Well, I'm going to do that. I need to start grabbing grab out of that now while I can. And the uh, only thing I have left is... Whew, that's tough. Damn it. I'll I'll, I'll take Carmella. <laughs> All right, Joe. Um, fuck it. I drafted two other Chikara wrestlers. Give me uh, Drew Gulak. Damn you. He's the Friday Night Scholar. For a better for a better Friday night. For a better Friday night. Uh, I'm going to go with a hard-hitting guy that I don't think a lot of people will enjoy as much as they should. I'm going to take Tim Thatcher. Okay. Good. We saw his Evolve run. Mm -hmm. A lot of people shit on it. It actually wasn't that bad. Wait, who? Who'd you say? Tim Thatcher. Tim Thatcher. Oh, yeah. Honestly. They shit on the end of his reign so hard. I mean, okay, but to be fair, like, him and I blame Gabe for that. did suck. I blame Gabe for that, though. I don't blame Thatcher. Yeah, I guess you're right. But Gabe's still around, but, so, I mean, I don't know. All right, I'm going to take this one. This guy's a little weird. I don't know how you feel about this guy. I'm going to take this, Loomis. Fuck! I'm not a fan. Why the fuck up, Michael? He was gonna be my pick this <laughs> this spot. Mm. Getting thin. Um. Him. All right. Well, you know what? Uh, he's not. I'm gonna draft this part of this tag team, and he would probably become a member of a tag team with the guy I just drafted. Give me Oni Lorkin. Oh, nice. Mm. Him and Tim Thatcher as a tag team would be very intimidating. Yeah, I buy that. <clears throat> I, I can get into that. Is this end of round six now, or are we still round six? That is, that is the end of round six. We are going to the final round of this day one of the draft. Okay. And that's you, Joseph. Uh, Joseph. Joseph, the floor is yours. I don't even know who the hell is left. Jeez. Some females. Who's left? Dominic. Dominic Mysterio's there still. Take Dominic. Dominic. 
I'm Dominic good. Mojo, Dominic Mojo, Kalisto, Raul Mendoza, Matt Mattel, Riddick Moss, Jake Atlas, and Shorty G. Um, I'll take Shorty G. Lord. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll take Mojo Raleigh. Okay. I'm gonna do some push-ups while you do this next time. You from got my women's division, I think. Am I gonna do that? No, uh, there's not any good women left. Damn. What you mean? You can still. No, Joe's just gonna try to draft like six of them as free agents. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me take uh Kalisto. Lucha, Lucha. I'm actually just going to put some of my male wrestlers in wigs. We're going to make this work. All right. Final pick for Joe Lopez of night number one of the draft. All right. Uh, I got to look at the list. <laughs> um, <laughs> who the hell is left in the women? Mickey, Liv, Tamina, Aaliyah, Billy Kay. Casey Canton Zero, Kaden Carter, Vanessa Bourne, Jesse Camilla, and Santana Gert. Let me take, I guess, oh, God. Let me. Fuck it. I'll take Casey Canton Zero. All right. The Friday Night Ninja. Isn't she, isn't she dating uh, Rick- Ricochet? I don't know if they still are or not. Okay. Uh, my final pick, of, or excuse me, my second round pick, uh, will also be a female. I'm going to take Liv Morgan. I was going to take it myself. Damn it. Okay. Um, last pick for me, uh, I will take Tamina. All right. Tamina's there. All right. Now, with the final pick of night number one, Monday Night Raw will select... God, this is bad. It's a, it, it got bad. <laughs> it got real thin about round six. It really did, though. That's the whole point of the draft, man. You can't have all the good people there. You have to That's why, they put and, a bottom of the barrel. I mean, night the night two fucking list, I think, is a hell of a lot deeper. Oh. I feel like it would have to be. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll spoil the night two pool. To you guys and to oh, the no. audience when I, after I make my pick. Okay. So this guy was fairly decent in Raw Underground, so I think he might be okay here. Uh, I'll take Riddick Moss. Is it even uh, the dude that just got hurt? Probably. No, that was Ridge Holland. Uh, basically the same person. How about uh, Dominant not getting, not getting drafted? What the fuck? <laughs> I mean, there's free Still agency. Rook. He's a rook. Yeah, all right. So the free agents are Dominic Mysterio, Raul Mendoza. Oh, let's see. Matt Mattel. Who is that? That is that is one half of 3.0. Oh, really? Yes. Which one? Is it Scott Parker or is it the other one? No, that's 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 uh Shane Matthews. Jagged? Yeah, no, okay. Jagged is Chase Parker. Oh, right. right Scott right. Parker. Uh, I would have drafted him if I realized that's who it was. I was basically rebuilding the Chikara roster at one point. Mickey James. I'm I'm typing up my free agent list, so you guys talk for a second. La 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 la. la, la. We'll go he over said the talk, floor. not sing, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no. Complete, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. So with that being said, there are currently, I believe, like twelve free agents. That sounds about right. Caden Carter. That's a born. So we're going to get this all up and... uh, No, we got to do night two before we vote. Well, yeah, yeah, but yeah, I see what you're saying. I'll I'll send you guys the updated free agents list. Sure. And we can discuss how we're going to do that. So, review of night one. Raw roster, which is myself. Undisputed Air, Daniel Bryan, Finn Balor. Keith Lee, Tony Storm, Bailey, Nia Jackson, Shayna Baszler, Pete Dunn, Otis, Kushida, Alexa Bliss, Brizongo, Santos Escobar, Dakota Kai, Cameron Grimes, Peyton Royce, Tim Thatcher, Oni Lorkin, Mojo Rawley, Liv, Moore, Liv Morgan, and Riddick Moss. Joe for SmackDown, Styles, Orton, Rollins, Cesaro, 
Lindsay Dorado, Ricochet, Mansoor, Ember Moon, Morrison and the Miz, Murphy, Rey Mysterio, Drew Gulak, Shorty G, and Casey Cantanzaro. And for NXT, it is the Hurt Business, Roman Reigns, Sasha Banks, Aleister Black, Jay Uso, Naomi, Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler, Shotzi Blackheart, Lacey Evans and Angel Garza, Carmella, Dexter Loomis, Kalisto, and Tamina. Seeing how I have seven more picks than you guys, obviously because I'm a three-hour show, uh, you guys will probably get first dibs on the free agents if you want any. Uh, The night two talent pool is one that is going to be very deep. It includes Retribution, uh, which is Ali, Mace, T-Bar, Slapjack, and Reckoning, a.k.a. Mia Yim. The New Day, E, Kofi, Xavier, the Street Prophets of Angelo Ford and Montez Daw- uh, excuse me, Angelo Dawkins and Montez Ford, The Fiend, Bray, uh, Braun Strowman, Shinsuke, Matt Riddle, Jeff Hardy, Tommaso Ciampa, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens. You weren't lying. Bruce, it was much deeper than the first one. R-Truth, Jim Corbin, Johnny Gargano, Swerve, uh, Sheamus, Lars Sullivan. Uh, it also has Asuka, Io, Rhea Ripley, Bianca Belair, Candice LeRae, Zelina Vega, Ruby Riot, Mandy Rose, and much more on the women's side as well. I definitely feel like night two is the deeper one. And I think that it works also because now we have a little bit of a strategy with where our rosters are. So we can kind of attack it differently going into night number two. Also, the draft order for night two will change. We'll randomize that on next week's show. So it's not the same order. Sounds good. All right. That looking, is forward, the, looking forward to it. Looking forward to night that two. Is night, that is night one of the Take Three Wrestling Podcast draft. All right. All right, Joe, bring it home. Hold will last take of the night. All right, sure. Um, so this one was an easy one to pick. Um, if you all watched AEW this past week, and I'll have you know. I, I did not. Um, but it doesn't matter. You don't actually, honestly, it's better if you don't talk about AEW at all during any of this segment. Let's all be honest. Thank because, God. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about and we're going to celebrate the 30 years of Jericho. Because I don't know about you guys, but like thinking about it, and you know, I, I kicked this idea around a little bit when uh when I was thinking about what to put up this week, and it was like this might be an obvious one, this might be an easy one. Um, and then I got to actually start and thinking about it, and I realized Jericho might legitimately be like my second favorite wrestler of all time. Like I can, there's not a lot of wrestlers that I feel like I can actually count down, like a number of matches that not only do I consider my favorite matches of theirs, but can can also call my favorite matches, period. And Jericho is in a lot of them, honestly. He's in my all-time favorite match. It was a four-way in ECW in 96 for the TV title. I think he was even the defending champion in that match. Um, spoiler alert, he was not the champion by the end of the match. But anyway, um, He's, you know, him and Benoit had some incredible matches. Their ladder match in 2001 is an easy memory. Um, and there's so many more, and I'll, I'll name more as we talk about, you know, through this segment. And I'll definitely explain more about why Jericho's, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but, like, I can remember even being in high school, and, like, I wasn't a big WCW fan. Like, I would, I would tune in, and I'd watch a little bit of Nitro because of all the NWO stuff. Yes, I was that simple fan who was like, oh, shit, it's Razor Ramon. Like, I was just like, okay, like, now I'm watching. And one of the only things that ever really caught my attention outside of the NWO was Jericho. To the point where when he showed up in 99 on on Raw, like, to me, it felt like the biggest deal ever. And it was so weird because it's like it, it probably shouldn't have because it's not like he was, like, world champion over in WCW. But his the way he sold himself his presentation and everything always made him a huge star and the fact is like you know i don't know it's kind of weird because like a lot of us i feel like you know we you don't stop and think about like how you've actually seen someone grow from literally being like an opener and like almost a nobody to being quite literally one of the greatest of all time and i mean like, we sort of, like, I guess we all sort of grew up with Shawn Michaels like that, but I don't know, that that one's not as easy for me to, like, liken as it is with Jericho. Because, I mean, like, there's not a lot that I can remember about Shawn Michaels' career from the early days other than, like, oh, yeah, he was in the Rockers and stuff. But, I mean, you know, prior to him being a singles guy, there aren't a lot of, like, memorable matches and everything. 
But Jericho, I mean, like literally almost right from the start, like there's not a company that he's ever been in. And I'm, I, even AEW, because he's had some great matches in AEW, not in the last like six months, um, but like definitely overall. I mean, I, his match with Adam Page over for the title, that was great. Um, he's had some good stuff. So, I mean, like I, I, I think it's totally worth celebrating. And he has a really good podcast. Oh, it's a great podcast. I love his podcast. Yeah, no, um, absolutely. So, I mean, if you guys want to talk about, you know, I mean, I feel like, you know, we're, we're all kind of around the same age-ish. Mike's the baby here. But, like, you know, we all kind of probably, <laughs> we all kind of probably were, like, of an age where we knew who he was when he showed up in WWE in 99. And, like, like I said, I don't know about you guys, but the fact, like, that's still one of my favorite segments of all time. Oh, without question. I mean, I, 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 maybe you, I, I'm sure you guys saw it in real time too, because I mean, yeah. I mean, the thing is, what, what and, and I said this on my, on my on my podcast on Thursday, what made that special too for me, especially looking back now, is that I wasn't as much as I love wrestling back then too. I was never into the dirt sheets, so I I, I didn't follow who was going where. I I all I knew Same, anything yeah. that happened on WF, WWE, whatever, anything that happened on on screen. I was surprised. I didn't know about it. I just right. went out. So when he came, when he came with the countdown, the whole thing, the whole count of weeks leading up to it, you know, like what the hell is this? I don't get it. And then the rocks out there, and this is the rock and I going to his peak. And then he comes out with the rock, and um, I mean, to this day, it's like the, to me the best intro I, I've ever yeah. seen. Yeah, absolutely. The surprise character too. You know what I mean? My favorite, my favorite match actually. You know, I, I, it's funny like. This mania is I always call this, this mania one of the most stacked manias ever. And yet I, I for some reason this Ms. Mask gets lost in the shuffle. You know these two guys are a legend, and you mentioned Shawn Michaels. The the HBK Jericho match of Mania nineteen, to me, still probably my favorite, not my second favorite uh, uh Jericho match of, of all time. I was I I think what's funny is it probably in the shuffle is because he and Michaels had a number of great matches. I mean, their ladder match um, for the title, I forget what year it was. I mean, was it after that? Maybe 2009 ish or something. Okay. That was, that match was incredible. Do you, Mike, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, yes. When they were doing that whole was, feud yes. with, like, yeah. Yes, I do remember that one. That, that was a really good match. Yeah. That I one did just thumbs up for me. I do feel kind of cheated though with Jericho because 2002 to 2016, you know, everything's a blur. I mean, I saw obviously I, I remember the, the the Mania Mania 19 in in uh in uh 03, but beyond that, like everything, like seeing the looking back in hindsight now and seeing the evolution of Chris Jericho, no, no matter what role he did, the lists or you know the paymaker or maybe you know. It, it's amazing how he's still been. This guy has been able to, to stay relevant. I, I, you, if you had told me in, in 1997, WCW, that this guy will be one of the probably top 10, 15 wrestlers of all time, I would have called you a liar. This guy is definitely in the conversation with greatest of all time. He may, oh, he may yeah, not be on the Mount no, Rushmore, but he's about like top 10, 15. What well, a question, Chris Jericho's in that conversation. Oh yeah, hands down, without question. I mean, he's, I mean. Quite literally one of the only guys to have been, like, pretty much everywhere, too, like, every major company. I mean, like, you, you have a lot of guys around now who, who like, yeah, I mean, and they were in New Japan and, you know, maybe AEW also. But, like, he's one of the only ones who's been everywhere, like, including companies that no longer exist, you know? Right. Uh, all right. So... The best thing Chris Jericho ever did, and I'm I'm gonna be very vocal about it, and you guys can disagree disagree with me if you want. That's fine. Uh, hold number seven, arm bar. <laughs> hold number twelve, Fujimara arm bar. That promo where he literally just comes up with seventy seven million different variations for yeah. arm bar when making fun of D Malenko. That's, That's probably the crazy. best thing he ever did. Uh, I yes, the, the the Y2K and everything, but I feel like that that almost like he got overshadowed by The Rock in that promo, which maybe The Rock wasn't the right guy to have him go in there first time there, but I get it, it's fine. My only gripe about that promo is that you know he's going up one on one against the most vocal and well known guy that WWE can put out there. Sometimes guys get lost in the shuffle, and to Jericho's yeah. credit, he was not one of them. You know what? You know what I find funny, though? Like, can I interject for two seconds? Well, Go ahead, sure. What you were just saying about, you know, 
of the the, the list, um, you know, the arm bar, all that being his greatest segment. I think there's an argument for that. I totally don't even disagree with that. I think one of the things, though, that shows you how how incredible Jericho is actually, how, like, amazing his, like, thing. He's one of the few guys who you can point to things from vastly different eras of his career and be like, this might have been better than this. This is like, you know, like, you know, they, they belong in, in conversation for, like, greatest moments, like, most memorable moments in wrestling history. Because, like, I, like I said, I fully agree with you with that list. But, like, I'm not, I'm not so sure that I don't think that the greatest thing that Jericho was ever involved in wasn't the whole Festival of Friendship. When, oh, like, that was fucking awesome. But him and Kevin Owens, right. I saw some did of that. Did you see that? that? I, I didn't see it in real time. Then. No, no, but I did. I did. I've seen highlights in, re, you know, you know, in hindsight. No, but that was another one, like live in person. I mean, that was everything. Yeah, that that one was good. Um, obviously, um, his going to New Japan and taking on Tanahashi and stuff like that. That was that was that was Jericho. Badass. Yeah. Um, but what I'll say, and you know, I've said this to Joe and. I I don't like what he's been doing recently. Um, I feel like he's being wasted in the inner circle. But there's also part of me that comes off to where Jericho knows, you know, how much he's already done for the wrestling community. And he kind of just does whatever Jericho wants to do. Mm -hmm. Um, He doesn't look really greatly motivated in ring right now. Um, There's a lot of people on social media that are, Asking for him to wrestle with a shirt on. Oh, that's so mean. I, I, I'm not. I'm not disagreeing with it being mean, but there are yeah, people yeah, that are yeah. saying that like the Chris Jericho that we know and love is the Chris Jericho from the Cruiserweight division and from when he came over in 1999 and that Chris Jericho. Unless you know, I mean, the thing he is, though, he fucking, let's be real. I mean, and, and Mike, you you agree? He's He's fifty fucking years old, almost fifty years old. Like people need to accept that, okay? This, this is not nineteen seventy four. Hold on, hold on. You want them to accept that, but then people need to also accept the criticism of the fact of at fifty, maybe it's time to give other people the rub to move forward. Yeah, and, I and 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 he's been doing honest. that though. Something else, he's been doing that though with well, Orange so, Cassidy. Uh, so hold, on, has, hold on, hold on. Here's the funny on, thing. He did it with Orange Cassidy. And that's about he, it. That's about it. Since he's gone to, to, to AEW, who else has he put over? So, well, here's what's funny to me. It felt like the whole point of the the um, inner circle was to get all those guys over. And it just, at this point, is clearly not happening. Well, so, Sammy, Sammy's going to be well without like, it, though. Huh? No, Sammy, Sammy's, Sammy's, not over. Sammy's gotten his, has gotten a little bit of his, his, his own, you know, niche yeah, now. Yeah, okay, Sammy, you're right. Sammy's not, I will give you, Sammy's not over even, you know, th- like I would say part of, as thanks partly to the group. I'll give you that. Um, Sammy, Sammy that lost said, all of his though, momentum when Sammy fucking yes. got suspended, though. Yes. Right. I, that, 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 said, yeah. that said, though, I sort of feel like at this point, if Jericho wants to be doing what he's doing, and Yes, I do think that he's earned the right to kind of do whatever the fuck he wants at this point. Um, but if what he wants to be doing is kind of like the silly thing and like the commentary and stuff, then you know what? Turn face. Just full on turn face. Let all the inner circle guys beat the shit out of him. Let them establish themselves as heels. They'll get further in the company than they're getting right now. And like, then he could just do whatever he wants. He could be the guy that everybody loves. Because obviously what? that's. Oh, I'm telling, right I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now. If if your turn, if if this is going to be a thing, like there's one person that becomes the heel out of this, and it's Hager. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I would yeah. have Hag- I would have Hager beat the shit out of him after yeah. they lose a tag after they lose a tag match, and now Hager becomes the guy that is going to then be the unstoppable heel monster that could then fight Moxley that we thought he was going to be when he came into the company as the MMA fighter, but in reality. He really hasn't been anything more than, well, Jack Swagger. Right. Yeah. Well, one thing is clear though. He since losing to Moxie in February, he he hasn't be, been anywhere near the tell picture. He's just been getting guys over, you know, fucking the, the inner circle and feuding with the, the with the the elite, you know, Orange and Cassidy, getting, and, and that's but, it pretty much. That's not. 
And that's not getting guys over. The only no, guy not. he's gotten over, and the only one you'll ever get me to admit to, is Orange Cassidy. Orange Cassidy. The inner yeah. circle, the inner circle, Santana or Keys, they got the best friends over. Jericho wasn't be, involved in any of that shit. Right. To, to be fair, too, I don't even know that San, that that he got Orange Cassidy over. Orange Cassidy was already over. He just gave him a big win. Like he definitely put him over, but I'm just saying, he gave him, getting him over. He gave him, he gave him, he gave him the rub. He didn't give, yeah. really give him the push. He put the him over. over. I mean, let's let, let let's just look at Jericho real quick, uh, and we'll we'll sit there over the last. Let's see, because I'm literally looking at his match list right now. Uh, this week, which was the 30 years of Jericho. Him and Hager defeated the Chaos Project of Luther and Serpentico, which I heard was an awful fucking match. You know, um, uh, let's give him a plug for a second because, like, we're talking about him. He's got a new book coming out I saw on Instagram where it's, like, literally a list of every single match he's ever been in. It sounds kind of cool to me. Like, I kind of want to check it out. Uh, He defeated Isaiah Cassidy of of Private Party. Uh, Him and Hager defeated Private Party. Notice qualification match. Him and Hager defeated Joey Janela and Sonny Kiss. The Mimosa Mayhem match that he lost. He defeated Joey Janela on a Dynamite show. Uh, lost to Orange Cassidy in the $7,000 obligation thing. Lost to the Best Friends and Jurassic Express and Orange Cassidy. It was them versus the Inner Circle. They defeated Jurassic Express. He defeated Orange Cassidy. Lost to the Best Friends with Sammy in a number one contender's tag title match, beat Cole Cabana in 6 minutes and 50 seconds, lost to the Elite in Stadium Stampede, beat beat Pineapple Pete in a minute 4 seconds, beat the uh, team of Kenny Omega and Matt Hardy in a Falls Count Anywhere match, um, and so lost, wait, the title, lost the title what, to Moxley. What you're telling me is he didn't put over Pineapple Pete. He didn't put over <laughs> Pineapple Pete. He didn't put over Joey Janela. He didn't put over Cole Cabana. That bastard. Jesus Christ. What, what I'm – from a result standpoint, though, that's that's not the thing that I guess AEW Moxley has me frustrated – or AEW Jericho has me frustrated with. It's literally the fact that I don't know if he has – I'm not going to use the creative control excuse in his contract – but literally, with the exception of the Elite and Orange Cassidy, two two guys that really don't need Chris Jericho losing to them to get them over, because obviously the Elite is probably one of the most overacts in wrestling, and uh, Orange Cassidy is probably the most overact in wrestling right now. But why couldn't they lose to Private Party? Why couldn't they lose to Joey so Jones and Sonny Kiss some fluky so way? Wait, wait, wait. Wait, as 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 a way to end this segment, because I feel like we're running long anyway, um, I'm going to ask both of you guys for an opinion here, just to follow along with this. If you could have Jericho go into a feud right now and put over, and I'm not, not, not just a one match, not one loss, but a whole feud, like the way he just did with Orange Cassidy, and put someone over, who would, who would you have him do that with? Who do you think would like serve the best to get that rug? I think honestly, it'd be time to break up the inner circle. I think I'm almost there now. Like the He's angle he was doing with Jake Hager. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the Hager. I would say Hager or somebody that of that ilk. You know, I think at this point it's it should be internal. It's supposed, it's supposed to anybody outside the uh, you know, that 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 faction, if you will. So I, I agree with Mike. Him and Hager would be, Mike? be a nice story. Mike, I, I'm trying to think real quick. Give me a second. I'll see if I can. Uh give you a definitive answer here so that we can move on with this one. Um, I think a guy who would get a good push from him, um, that would be fun to see them kind of have an angle. Um, and this is just going to be, I'm going to go for guys lower on the card. I mean, obviously you could go with Adam Page because of how good of a match they had and stuff like that. Uh, two guys right, that right. I'm really, two guys that I'm really sticking on. First one, Maxwell Jacob Friedman. Yeah, which seems to be the direction they're going in. Yeah, which which if that's the case, that's cool. Uh, the second one that I that I keep coming back to, scrolling through their through their roster, 
I think if this would be a, a perfect guy for Darby to beat. I was just thinking him. Stole my answer. They did a fuse a little bit, though, uh, early in the year, didn't they, when he was a champion? Well, late I mean, last he year. had a match. He had a yeah. match or two. Like, it wasn't anything of, like, substantial, like, rank, right. like the Orange Cassidy thing. Well, um, Darby didn't get his own match on that, though. But. And the only other one that I was right. thinking about, and I know he's a, a heel. Bit. I know he's a heel right now. But someone that I think would be fun to see him promo against uh, would be Kip Sabian. Okay. I thought you were gonna. Say, I thought you were gonna say Eddie Kingston for a second. Well, that too, because. But I mean, I don't know. If, I don't know if Eddie's really the guy that needs that push. True. We all we all know who Eddie is. Yeah. All true. True. War War King, Last of a Dying Breed. Very true. But anyway, congrats to Chris Jericho in 30 years. Hell yeah. So, before we get going, MVPs. Uh, I'll go quickly. I'll go, I'll go first. That's Chris Jericho, 30 years, so <laughs> that, was, that was easy. Um, cheap. Huh? That was a cheap answer. No, but I had, before, even before we had a topic, I had, I had, I had this prepared. Yeah, you go. Mike, uh, I'm gonna have dual MVPs this week, and it's only because of what it was. Uh, my MVPs for this week is really the dog collar match between Cody and Mr. Brody Lee. So those are my Ooh. co-MVPs because the two of them put on a hell of a match. If you haven't seen it yet, uh, I enjoyed it. I, I did have to watch it while I was at work, obviously, and I haven't rewatched it. But first time watching it, it was a really good match. So uh, my co-MVPs are uh, Cody and Brody. All right. I, I I didn't really watch any wrestling this week, so my MVP this week is the inventor of the hot pocket because it's slapping right now. Like oh, I was gonna, I, I, I thought you were gonna, I thought you were gonna pick Xavier Woods since he made his in ring return. Oh, I didn't haven't watched it yet. X gonna give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So I guess Great we're done for this week. Yeah. Uh, uh, next week we'll continue uh, the draft and we, we'll react next week to night two. To, of, of course, night two of the W draft is on tomorrow or well, tonight when the podcast comes out uh, on Raw, and it will have draft two, uh, fantasy draft part two as well next Sunday. So yeah, I and guess, also oh. breaking breaking news: November will be tag team appreciation tournament because correct. You know, Mike's, correct. Mike's got to do some more research because it's been a long week. Yes, it is. So all right, for Mike, for Joe, I'm um, Ernest. And uh, until next week, guys, right? Kick rock, love your toe shoes. All right, bye. Cheap.